Hello, it's a wonderful Wednesday morning. My name is Denise Yapomaeji and I bring you AM News. The presiding judge in the Atuforsen trial has warned all parties in the case to tone down public commentary or face significant consequences. Public commentary on the case have increased significantly after the third accused person alleged in open court that the Attorney General has been making advances towards him to incriminate the minority leader. Justice Efia Sewa Sari Bojwe also had an intense confrontation with the NDC National Communications Officer in court over some, alleged, over some comments alleged to have been made by the politician out of court. Member of our legal affairs, Deskweku Asante, reports. It was a day of blistering and heated exchanges in court, particularly between presiding judge Justice Ifia Sewa Sari Bojwe and the National Communication Officer of the National Democratic Congress, Sami Jemfi, over some comments the, the, the National Communication Officer is said to have made outside of court. The court took particular exception to that, warning Sami Jemfi to be responsible in his commentary outside of court. Today, the court did not go into the substantive case. The cross-examination of Richard Jackpot did not continue because of certain interlocutory matters that are currently before the court. But the judge, Justice Efia Sewa Sariboki, had a warning to all the parties to tone down on the commentary that have gone on so far around the case, particularly since that bombshell of an allegation was made in open court by Richard Chakpa, that the Attorney General had made certain attempts, uh, attempts at getting him to incriminate the minority leader. The judge had a warning that they should not get themselves involved in commentary that can actually scandalize the court and poison the minds about the particular hearings so far. Tamir Jemfi, speaking to journalists afterwards, says he does not believe he made any wrong comments. He believes and agrees with the judge in principle that the commentary must go down, but they will continue to make forceful points about what they think is right. In principle, the caution of the court was in order, and it is something that we in the NDC agree with, and that is why right from the outset, we have been very circumspect in whatever we say on this case and have ensured that the court is not in any way or form scandalized. I think the particular reference to me uh, was something that, in my humble opinion, uh, the courts, you know, got wrong. And uh, um, I took the opportunity to draw the court's attention to the fact that the said comment was not about this court or the presiding judge in this trial. Um, I think that you are aware that we have a press conference at 2 p.m. to address the unprofessional and criminal conduct of the Attorney General in this matter. The Deputy Attorney General, Alfred Tuyaeboa, says the Attorney General himself is currently outside the country, has not made any decision as to whether or not he will recuse himself from this case. He's currently on official duties outside the country, and when he returns, will continue in the assignments he's currently undertaking. The Attorney General has come under fire. There are calls for his resignation or for President Ekufuado to fire him for that allegation that have been made against him. The Deputy Attorney General has also been giving certain indication as to what they make of all the public commentary that have been going on so far. Is AG around? Is AG intending to take any further steps about the allegations made against him in open court last week? AG is on, a, on, on our official assignment and he'll be back very soon. There are many calls that, looking at what is happening, the AG, AG to step up. That's the decision, decision of the AG to make, mm. but I don't see it that way. I, I, I do not see any tension. We are prosecuting our case. They are defending their clients, and that's how the legal system works. So far as we are doing our work in court, we continue to do it and nothing else. So there's no tension. I don't know the controversy we are talking about. A mere allegation has been made. And so if anybody thinks that he may want a committee to be, to be set up, I disagree with such a person. And I don't see anyone who may want to even think that it's a matter that borders on the integrity of the attorney general or any other thing. He's very resolute. He's well composed, he's out of jurisdiction, he'll be back to continue his work as an attorney general. The court is expected to return next week Tuesday. Certain applications are currently before the court. The court will then hear those applications. The judge says she needs to make a reasoned ruling on that and then the case will proceed. Reporting for Joy News, Kweku Asante, High Court Complex, Accra. And let's move away from the courts because recent power outages being experienced in some parts of the country are taking a toll 
on private morgues in the Ashanti region. Some private morgues in the region are struggling to preserve bodies with extended power cuts that often last more than 12 hours per day. The situation has left many grappling with unexpected fuel costs and hastily arranged burials. Nana Boache Yadom has more in this report. Not just the living suffocates when the light goes off and on, the dead also swelter. The current erratic power supply does not just affect our homes and businesses, but the home of the dead and the business of the mortuary man. In today's episode of Dumso Diaries, we tell you the crestfallen stories of mocks suffering from the intermittent power cuts. The recent electricity woes have taken on a new urgency, posing unprecedented challenges for private morgues. The relentless power cuts have triggered an alarming issue that goes beyond just inconvenience, but the rapid decomposition of corpses. The city morgue is among several morgues in Kumasi, bearing severe economic challenges as a result of the intermittent power cuts. Kwame Usue J is a mortician at the City Morgue Limited. The company is left to spend so much on fuel. The situation is affecting our business. Something must be done for us to benefit. Families complain. We have to work extra now to keep the bodies. Bodies are decomposing more rapidly than usual due to recent power disruptions. Kwame explains how frustrating it is to perform his duties. We do suffer a lot as attendants. The outage keeps the body dry, which is not what we expect. It is like losing the eyes or meat bought from the cold store. The bodies are infected and they are not well preserved when the light goes off. The situation presents grieving families with a difficult decision to hurriedly conduct funerals while adding additional stress, emotional torture and significant monetary strains to their already challenging times. Kofi Odro explains the challenge families go through. The plant sometimes refuses to function. The bodies are not well kept due to the outages. It's destroying our businesses. Families get frustrated any time they get here to see their bodies dry. Moktishian Kwame J is pleading with authorities to provide a load shedding timetable to help enhance his work. We plead with government to do something about the intermittent power cuts. We want something to be done as soon as possible, at least a timetable. For Joe News, Nana Bwachidankwe Yadom, Komasi.
And now some 900 vulnerable school girls at the Boyman Senior High School have benefited from reusable sanitary kits. This is to enable them focus on their studies even during their time of the month. Plan International Ghana, who made the presentation, says myths and taboos surrounding menstruation should not prevent girls from achieving their goals. There's more in the following report. It is estimated that some 8 million girls and women between the ages of 15 and 49 go through their menstrual cycles each day. This is said to cause anxiety, sickness, trauma for most, especially the younger girls. This is often accompanied by stigma and shame. It is for these that groups and individuals have for a decade decided to support vulnerable girls to live up to that time of the month. Plan International Ghana has, on the occasion of this year's Menstrual Health and Hygiene Day celebration, supported some 900 vulnerable girls at the Boeman Senior High School. This is to encourage them to stay in school at that time of the month and focus on their studies. According to the country director for Plan International Ghana, Constant Chona, menstrual health and hygiene must be considered a human right concern to achieve a period-friendly world. To achieve together for a period-friendly world, we must uh, strive toward the global objective of ensuring that menstrual health is rightly positioned as both a human right and a health right for girls, young women and women. To achieve this, Plan International Ghana and all stakeholders must work together towards a, friend, a friendly environment where comprehensive menstrual health education is the cornerstone of the environment. We must try to eliminate, eliminate the myth and misconception surrounding menstruation through age-appropriate and cultural sensitive education programs. Where access to affordable and sustainable menstrual health products is a fundamental human right. We must work towards eliminating financial barriers and ensuring that menstruators, regardless of their social economic status, have access to a range of safe and hygienic menstrual products. The group has also inaugurated water system and a girl-friendly toilet facility for the DA Basic School at Quensim in the Jessica municipality. This was the situation before the intervention. This is to also enable young girls stay in school during their menstrual cycles. This, the headmaster of the school, Nyasogbo Benoni, says is yielding good results. And that makes it that children to come to school every day because they have a place that they will eat themselves during the time that it is needed. Now the facility is incorporated with the uh, changing room for the girls who, uh, who help us their mains. In those days, when the girls are in their mains, they don't come to school. It makes it that the attendance rate becomes very low because they don't come. When they are in their mains, they don't have place to change, so they don't come. Now that we have it, it has increased the attendance rate of the school. And now the academic work is going on well. So we are very happy for the standard and ultra-modern toilet facility given to us. Now we have a hand washing facility also, whereby we can wash our hands to practice and maintain the uh, personal hygiene. The celebration saw female leaders in the Jazikan municipality inspire the female students to brace the odds of menstruation and focus on the education. Peter Senu for Joy News. And Member of Parliament for Wild West Constituency, Superintendent Retired Peter Lanchanetobu, has urged women in the Wild West enclave to take their menstrual hygiene and health seriously. He was speaking at a program held to educate young girls and mothers in the district as part of activities to mark World Menstrual Hygiene Day. Joy News' Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam reports from WA. World Menstrual Hygiene Day is a global initiative aimed at breaking the silence and raising awareness about the importance of good menstrual hygiene management. To mark the day, Member of Parliament for the World West Constituency, Superintendent Retired Peter Lanchinetubu, organized a forum to educate and sensitize women and girls in the constituency on menstrual hygiene 
and health. They also donated to them over 1,500 packs of sanitary pads. His first point of call was at Dormu, where girls from the various basic schools in the area, persons with disability, apprentices of dressmakers and market women were educated about menstrual hygiene and health. And all I have come to do is to bring young girls from the National Democratic Congress to help educate young girls in the Dormu traditional area about menstrual hygiene and menstrual health. So if you find the ladies around, their duty is to assist you. Menstruation should not be a punishment. That's why we're saying that it should be friendly. How can it be friendly if you are not educated? How can it be friendly if you are not supported? Accompanying the NDC World West Parliamentary candidate for the 2024 election was a national executive member of the NDC, Madam Cecilia Asaga. So we just want to tell you that menstrual period shouldn't be something that should Superintendent retired, lent in the tubu, then proceeded to La Tolu and Puyuntanga en route to Wachau for a similar event. At the St. Ignatius of La Yola Senior High School, popular known as La Tolu Senior High School, he donated 772 sanitary pass to the female students and urged them to take their menstrual health and hygiene seriously. The acting medical director of the Ankafor Psychiatric Hospital, Dr. Eva Zikwao, has emphasized the need for greater public understanding and acceptance of individuals with mental health conditions. Dr. Kwao highlighted that people with mental health issues deserve the same love care and support like everyone and should not be stigmatized. Speaking at an exercise to mark Mental Health Awareness Month in Cape Coast, Dr. Kwa urged the public to be aware of the available mental health care facilities and to seek help whenever needed. There's more in this report. The month of May has been tagged as Purple Month. It stands for mental health. Within the month, Many activities have been organized by mental health advocates to create awareness. In Cape Coast, the Ankafo Psychiatric Hospital and other mental health advocates worked through the city's principal streets aimed at strengthening the awareness creation. Acting Medical Director of the Ankafo Psychiatric Hospital, Dr. Evezi Kwao says one of their biggest aims is to reduce stigma and promote a more inclusive and supportive environment for those facing mental health challenges. That's one, people with a mental illness are just like any one of us. They deserve the same love, the same care, the same support, and we should not um, stigmatize them. We shouldn't look down on them and feel that they are less than others in society because they have a mental illness. And also, we want them to be aware of the facilities that are available for care, just like our facility, which is the Ankafo Psychiatric Hospital. We want them to know that our doors are always open to accept them, to listen to their concerns, and to see how best we can support them the journey to wellness. So ideally, whenever we identify someone in society who appears to have a mental illness, who may be living on the streets, appears to maybe have been neglected by their relatives or loved ones, or may seem to not know where they are even going to, the first thing we would want to do is to inform the assembly about this, inform the police as well. They are able to do that together with the social welfare system to ensure that that person gets the care that they need. Some of them can be brought into the psychiatric hospitals or other, psych other facilities that are not psychiatric hospitals hospitals where they can get the mental health care they need and sometimes if they require admission they are brought to facilities like ours, the Ankofo Psychiatric Hospital. In, interestingly, as the leader of this group today, I was very, very, very happy, very, very pleased, just overwhelmed with the support that we had from the NHIA, the Regional Health Directorate of the Ghana Health Service, from the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, all our stakeholders coming together to support us, to walk through the streets with us. Even when it started to drizzle in the rain, we were all all there singing and walking proudly with our plaque saying that we are here for mental health awareness and I was so glad to see that. Some of the mental health advocates spoke to Joy News. Nobody should lure you to engage yourself in more practice, especially substance taking. Many people are losing their lives because of this depression, anxiety, 
Gypsy. Many people are out there without drugs and they are performing so well. I don't want you to be a victim. If you are not mentally sane, you cannot go about your day-to-day -day activities. Your lifestyle, there can be changes. How productive you be will become declined. And support system will also uh, will not be effective because you, if you feel sad, you are not happy, and it has become persistent. The month of May may be ending, but the mental health advocates say they want the awareness creation to go on. Well, now let's do some business news, starting with the Bank of Ghana has raised some serious concerns about how Societe General is going about its planned review of operations. The parent bank earlier this month announced that it will soon end back on a strategic review of its business here in Ghana. However, it was silent on the structure of this review. Governor of Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ennis Addison, says they have been left in the dark. Change resources associated with remittances are placed in the nostril balances of our commercial banks and the banks have access to those resources to finance imports. So it comes to the broader Ghanaian banking system. I'm not sure if the central bank wants to go and chase those resources also to, to build reserves. At, at the moment, we, do, we don't intend taking those resources from the commercial banks. I think that the commercial banks should have access to the remittance flows to finance economic activity. Now, MTN Ghana boss Stephen Blewitz is linking improved investment into broadband connections to the expansion of the economy. Mr. Blewett says that an area that could be explored to help in the recovery of the economy. Blewett spoke on the sidelines of the Ghana CEO Summit here in Accra. So if you have a 10% increase in broadband penetration in a country, the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, did research around the world. You see a 2.5% growth in GDP. That's significant. Just from an increase in 10% of broadband penetration. So that means we need to allow that to happen. And to have that happen, you need to have, give people access to devices at better prices. We've got to make sure that we have a quality network. We've got to make sure the pricing is also good so that people have access to use data. When you do that, you grow your economy. I mean, that's the reality. Yeah. So, so the important thing for us is that if you allow mobile or connectivity to grow, you grow economies. And that's a fact. It's proven around the world. So how we work in Ghana should be to allow the companies that are providing connectivity to grow. Allow them to develop, allow them to have the technologies, allow them to have the freedom to develop. Because when they do that, they grow the GDP. And it's not because people have take a narrow view. They look at, at us as, as telcos and see us as just as a telco, but we are a tech co. We, we go be way beyond that and we influence everyone's lives in terms of the, the services we offer on our platform business. So I think once you start to have that mindset, it allows for a growth of the economy. And that's the mindset we have to have. On that note, we wrap up for business updates, but handing over back to Poma. Good Wednesday morning, is it? Wonderful Wednesday morning. <laughs> okay, so that's... That's it for business updates. Um, we'll take a break and I'll come back and wrap up with the news.